Royal Family Live, Harry's Memoir to Focus on Terrible Tragedy, Duke Urged to Move On. Prince Harry's memoir is set to focus on a terrible tragedy in his life, according to a royal expert who urged the Duke of Sussex to move on. The Duke of Sussex is reportedly receiving pounds 14.5 million, 20 million dollars, in advance for the book, which will tell his perspective of his struggles within the firm. He said in a statement that he is writing his memoir not as the prince I was born but as the man I have become. However, his book has already sparked a flurry of reaction online, with royal expert Angela Levin noting that he is likely to speak about his late mother Princess Diana who tragically died in a car crash in 1997. She wrote on Twitter, I've been told by a well-informed source that Harry's memoir will focus heavily on the death of his mother Princess Diana, and who he blames. It was a terrible tragedy but sad the man can't move on. The prince will also not be writing the book alone as award-winning journalist and author Junior Moringa is set to be his ghostwriter, who is known for not holding back. The Telegraph's Marion Swain warned the royal family that the memoir could horrify them, particularly as they are unlikely to find out what Mr. Moringa has written before it is published. She wrote, Working with Moringa is a statement of intent, that this book may actually have something to say. Readers should be salivating. The palace should be very afraid. However it came about, it's bad news for anyone hoping that the royal rift will be repaired any time soon. Nothing is off the table, according to Prince Harry's description of this honest and captivating personal portrait dash not his childhood, public duties, military service or family life. That's exactly the kind of outspokenness, with the prince trumpeting his side of the story, that should horrify the royal family. But it's great news for the rest of us. With Moringa at the helm, this memoir should be teeming with headline-making scoops. As Agassi said of the explosive open. The truth is always surprising. Buckingham Palace has not yet commented on the memoir. 2.37M Update, Prince Edward's Deeply Unfortunate Royal Visit to Gibraltar Laid Bare Prince Edward and his wife, Sophie, Countess of Wessex, sparked fury in Spain when they visited Gibraltar in 2012, unearthed reports claim. The UK has promised to fight for Gibraltar's sovereignty after Brussels demanded Spanish boots on the ground as the price for a post-Brexit trade deal. The EU is calling for Gibraltar to remain inside its single market, the Schengen free travel area, as well as follow tax rates set by Madrid. Under the plans, Spanish police would also be able to enter the British outpost unchallenged if they are in hot pursuit of a criminal. The EU's draft mandate states, Surveillance would take place at Gibraltar port, airport and waters carried out by Spain applying the relevant EU rules. Spanish border guards would have all necessary powers to perform border controls and surveillance. 12.24M Update, Princess Anne's furious rant reduced Sarah Ferguson to tears, you were an outsider. Princess Anne once launched into a scathing rant at Sarah Ferguson, reducing the Duchess of York to tears, archive reports show. And looked to galvanize Great Britain's Olympic team this week after sending a message of support ahead of the Tokyo Games. She was the first member of the royal family to compete in the Olympics when she rode the Queen's horse, Goodwill, in the equestrian three-day event in Montreal in 1976. As president of the British Olympic Association, she wished them success, urging them that though the Games may be different because of the coronavirus pandemic, they are no less important. The video was characteristically an, no-nonsense, straight-talking, get-the-job-done-and-come-back-home-with-medals. She has become known for this frank and often at times offhand style. None was this more present than in her relationship to Sarah Ferguson, her brother Prince Andrew's wife, affectionately known as Fergie. 10.45M Update. Harry Torn Apart Over New Book. Prince Harry has been torn apart over his new book with a royal expert pointing out that Edward VIII took 15 years to release his memoir after quitting the monarchy. Royal commentator Russell Myers wrote in The Mirror, when the Queen's uncle Edward VIII quit his royal role, leaving the monarchy and the family in utter turmoil at his dereliction of duty over personal preference, he took 15 years to write his memoirs. His excuse came amid the passage of time and dire financial troubles. 
Harry has neither of these. 10.30 p.m. Update, George all grown up on 8th birthday in new photo. Prince George looks very grown up in a new photo released to mark his 8th birthday. The future king celebrates his birthday on Thursday and to mark the milestone a new picture has been shared by Prince William and Kate. George is sat on a Land Rover Defender and the image in a sweet nod to the late Prince Philip, who died in April. The Duke of Edinburgh, George's great-grandfather, was known for his love of Land Rovers. George grins for the camera in the snap taken by the Duchess of Cambridge in Norfolk earlier this month, where the Cambridges have their family home, Anmer Hall. 8.40 p.m. Update Kate and William winning transatlantic popularity contest Harry and Meghan created. Kate and Prince William have proved they are winning the transatlantic popularity contest against Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, a royal author has claimed. Royal expert Duncan Larkham said, William and Kate are definitely on the charm offensive right now, and it's working. While William has always spoken out against racism, his statement this time was really powerful and especially relevant after Harry and Meghan's accusation about the royal family. William and Kate have kept a dignified silence but now they're letting their actions do the talking. Mr. Lar commanded, Harry and Meghan created a transatlantic popularity contest with William and Kate when they chose to speak out and do Oprah, and it's William and Kate who are now winning. 8.05 p.m. Update Fury as Republicans seize on George's birthday to demand end of monarchy. Anti-royal activists have attempted to hijack Prince George's eighth birthday by renewing their calls to scrap the monarchy ahead of the little boy's big day. A message posted by campaign group Republic Read, a boy who turns eight tomorrow has already had his life mapped out. He can't choose his religion or career or choose not to marry or not have children. Prime ministers and archbishops will have a say in what he can do and say and who and how he can marry. The hashtag hashtag end the monarchy was added to the sinister note. 6.45 p.m. Update, Harry and Meghan mocked by Simon McCoy in sarcastic post. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been mocked by Simon McCoy in a Twitter post. The GB News presenter joked that he hoped everything was well with the pair after not hearing from them for a couple of hours. Mr. McCoy tweeted, nothing from the Duke and Duchess of Montecito for a few hours. Hope all is OK. 6.20 p.m. Update, Beloved Tradition resumes at Queen's Berkshire residence. The beloved tradition of the changing of the garden Windsor is resuming tomorrow. One of the most iconic traditions taking place in Windsor is returning on July 22, four days after the government lifted all the COVID-19 regulations that were still in place. The guard change will take place three times a week over the next two months, Visit Windsor said. 6 p.m. Update, Aussie host in blistering rant at Harry's memoirs. Prince Harry has been blasted by the morning show's Peter Ford over the negative impact his memoir will have on the royal family and the Queen. Mr. Ford said, they make it pretty clear in the press release the proceeds are going to charity. Now that to me, I'd almost respect them more if they weren't doing that. Because you think, well, why are you doing it? If you are giving the money,
Kay note that the Duke of Sussex isn't the first member of the firm to write a memoir. Former King Edward VIII published his autobiography in 1951, almost two decades after he abdicated. However, Mr. Kay claimed the Duke of Windsor needed to tell his story also because he found himself in a tight financial situation. On the other hand, the expert believes the Duke of Sussex has been able to become financially independent from the royal family over the past months also thanks to the unbreakable links he has had with the firm since his birth. The Daily Mail editor at large wrote in the newspaper, when Edward VIII published his memoir A King's Story in 1951, he was struggling financially, cut off from the monarchy and without any source of income. With his Netflix, Spotify and Apple TV millions, Harry has no need to earn yet more money. Instead, in what many will see as an attempt to deflect criticism, he is piously promising that proceeds from his book, which will cover his childhood in the public eye, his military life, marriage and fatherhood, will go to charity. Just how charitable the royal family will feel towards the wayward Duke of Sussex, with a book that threatens to overshadow the Queen's Platinum Jubilee next year, remains to be seen.